Top 10 Biggest Badasses of All Time. Number 10, Leroy Jenkins. The only virtual member of our list, Leroy Jenkins is the name of someone in the popular online game World of Warcraft. In this game, dozens of fantasy warriors must team up to accomplish goals together, which require in-depth strategic planning and organization to take down various baddies. Leroy achieved fame and immortality one day by throwing caution to the winds and just charging into things head first after having been away from his keyboard for the important planning session. After the hilarious slaughter of almost 50 virtual warriors ensued, the video of these exploits promptly went viral, leading to the popular meme, Battle Cry of Leroy, which can be heard today in online games everywhere. Number 9. Louis Sear Louis Sear was a well-known French-Canadian strongman who lived around the turn of the last century and is widely regarded as a leading contender for the title of strongest person to have ever lived. Some of his more impressive feats, including lifting over 500 pounds with one finger and backlifting over a full ton, 4,337 pounds to be precise. At just 18, in one of his early performing engagements, he lifted an entire horse off the ground and it was placed on a platform with two massive iron bars attached, enabling the massive man to get a better grip. His most iconic feat occurred when lifting another platform upon which stood 18 fully grown men. Earning little money in the performing circuit, Mr. Sear eventually became a police officer. Originally turned away from the force as the chief thought a man of his bulk could not possibly have the speed and agility necessary for the job. Mr. Sear immediately challenged the department to a foot race during which he defeated a majority of the officers. At one point during his career in law enforcement, he broke up a knife fight single-handedly, then picked up one perp in one hand and a second in the other and literally dragged them back to the station for booking. Number 8. Hugh Glass while the story of Mr. Glass has notably been embellished at least a bit over the years, if even a fraction of the core story is true, the man is definitely a giant badass. A fur trapper active in the early parts of the 19th century in the American West, Mr. Glass was unfortunately mauled by a grizzly bear during one trapping expedition. Although he did kill the bear in hand-to-hand -hand combat, he was severely wounded during the attack and passed out from shock. Left for dead by his companions, he regained consciousness only to find himself abandoned and completely without food or equipment of any kind. So he proceeded to clean and dress his wounds using the skin of the dead bear as bandaging. He then trekked back to civilization over a grueling six-week journey. During this journey, he repeatedly fought off wolves, let maggots eat one of his legs to prevent gangrene from setting in, and even constructed a raft from twigs and driftwood to travel downriver at one point. The crowning achievement in this man's journey of badassdom was when he had native Indians help him sew portions of the bearskin to his back in order to suture closed open wounds he had there that were not healing. That is pretty badass. Number 7. Michael Malloy An alcoholic Irishman 
living homeless on the streets of New York during the Roaring Twenties, Iron Mike was marked for death by the ruthless owner of a speakeasy as a part of a life insurance scam. Extended unlimited credit at the bar, the owner and his confederates hoped Mr. Malloy would quickly drink himself to death. When that didn't work, they added antifreeze to his liquor, which still did not kill him. Next, they tried horse liniment and finally rat poison. Still alive months later, they began feeding him raw oysters soaked in wood alcohol and poisoned with rotting sardine sandwiches filled with carpet nails. They even dragged him out into the minus 26 degree weather one night after he passed out from drinking and poured gallons of water on him. The next day, he showed up at the bar in the morning, same as always. They did succeed in hospitalizing him for a while after running over him in a car traveling almost 40 miles an hour, but only finally succeeded in killing him by stuffing a gas pipe down his throat after he had passed out from drinking and then pouring gasoline down his gullet for an hour. Four out of five conspirators involved in killing Mike the Durable received the death penalty for their role in this incredible ordeal. Number six, Jack Churchill. Mad Jack Churchill was a British commando during World War II. He was known for his motto of, any soldier who goes into action without his sword is improperly dressed. While soldiers may have snickered at the time, by the end of the war, no one was laughing at Fighting Jack. In 1943, he and a corporal infiltrated a town in Sicily held by the Nazis at the time. Armed with a longbow, a basket-hilted Scottish broadsword, and a set of bagpipes, the only arms he fought with all throughout the war, Mad Jack proceeded to capture 42 men, as well as German mortar positions in the town. Mr. Churchill is also widely claimed to have carried out the last recorded longbow and arrow killing during action during his exploits. Number 5. Simo Haya Nicknamed the White Death by the encroaching Russian Red Army, this Finnish marksman has recorded the most sniper kills of all time in any major war, with at least 505 confirmed kills. All of these kills occurred within a 100-day period during the short winter war fought from 1939 and 1940 between Finland and the USSR. That's an average of over five per day at a time of the year when there are very few daylight hours in the area. What makes Mr. Haya a true badass is the fact that he preferred not to use telescopic sights for his rifle, only relying on good old iron sights instead. This was for a few reasons he later explained. First, a sniper had to raise his head higher in order to look through the telescopic sight. Secondly, the glass lens in a telescopic sight frequently fogged up in the freezing Baltic weather, reducing accuracy. And finally, sunlight glare or reflection off a telescopic sight could reveal his position to the army. Simo was known for burying himself and his rifle in a mound of snow to be virtually undetectable to enemy snipers. He even held snow in his mouth while in the field to prevent breath from giving his location away. Number 4. Hey Redden, Redbeard, Barbarossa. Move over, Blackbeard. You've got nothing on Hey Redden, Redbeard, Barbarossa, the most notorious pirate of all time. This man was such a fearsome fighter that he was able to persuade the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire to set him up as the leader of his own pirate state on the coast of North Africa called the Regency of Algiers. He proceeded to assemble a pirate fleet that slowed trade on the Christian Mediterranean to a crawl, and at one point defeated the combined fleets of the Pope, Venice, 
Genoa, Portugal, Spain, and Malta at the Battle of Provenza hundreds of years later. The Barbary pirate states which descended from Redbeard's Algiers were the first entities to declare war on the newly formed United States of America after it received its independence from Great Britain. Number 3. Eric Hartman When you think of the most feared fighter pilot to ever have lived, most people think of the famous Red Baron. However, the fact is another German ace, Eric Hartmann, dwarfed the Baron in virtually every important measurement of success as a fighter pilot. In fact, he towers above all other pilots of any conflict before or since in terms of performance. With an incredible 352 individual victories in the air and survival over a total of 1,400 combat missions during World War I. On top of this, Hartman was able to further boast that he was never successfully shot down. He only ever ditched his plane due to mechanical breakdown or failure, and that he never had a wingman of his killed in action either. Number 2. Musashi Miyamoto Perhaps the greatest swordsman ever to have lived, Musashi Miyamoto, was a Japanese samurai from the Sengoku Jidai period of the 17th century. He got his start early killing his first opponent, a fully grown and armed samurai, at the tender age of just 13, essentially by beating him to death with a large wooden staff. After traveling the countryside and winning nearly 60 duels without suffering a single loss or wound, in fact, most of his duels were won in a single strike. He eventually became embroiled in the politics of the time and sees action on the field as part of an army. At the Battle of Sekragara, he slaughters a huge number of enemy opponents and again emerges completely unscathed. After his battles, he continues to wander the land, fighting incredible duels with other legendary swordsmen of the time, such as Sasaki Kohiro. During this duel, he brought a boat oar to the fight instead of a sword, and still won. At one point, he even takes on the whole school of martial artists single-handedly. He basically never lost a fight, ever, despite a lifetime spent searching them out. Number 1. Alexander of Macedon Despite living to only 33 years of age, Alexander of Macedon, or Alexander the Great as he is more commonly known, accomplished more in his lifetime than nearly anyone else in all of history. Undefeated on the battlefield as a general and commander, he was able to conquer virtually all of the known world of his time in lightning quick military campaigns. His battlefield command was so so incredible that he was able to repeatedly crush other military geniuses of the time as if they were children. His badass attitude doesn't end on the battlefield either. He was also one of the greatest spreaders of Greek thought and Hellenistic culture the world has ever seen and is basically single-handedly responsible for seeding the values and thoughts that would eventually come to comprise what we now think of as Western civilization. He founded over 70 cities named after himself and even one named after his horse throughout the world, many of which still exist today.